potatoes. It's said that there are a thousand paths up a mountain, and so it is with growing food. Hi, I'm Jim O'Gorman, and I'm known as the Dirt Doctor. I've got a biological focus on the soil, returning badly damaged agricultural soil to organic and biological health. That's what I've been doing for the last 26 odd years. I've got the science to prove that it works, and I'm having a great time here. Come along and join me. Today we get to talk about the science behind what I'm doing here. Now, for those who aren't into science and they, they just don't follow it at all, that's okay, your eyes can glaze over now and you can go away. It doesn't matter. What you can say is that I've got the results from three different laboratories here that demonstrate that in every respect the soil is healthier at the end of a season even though I've been harvesting really, really intensively and growing a lot more um, intensively than a lot of people, the soil is healthier at the end of the season than it is uh, at the beginning. And I've demonstrated it through three different laboratories looking at three different aspects. It's often said, I often say that my most important tool that I have to grow food is the microscope. And I say it again. I look through the microscope and understanding what I have to do to maintain healthy soil. Now my soil is said to be teeming with microbes. I can prove that because I've seen it in the Soil Food Web Lab reports and under the microscope myself. It also shows that I've been working on how to balance your soil, your, uh, not just the microbial balance, but the chemical balance of your soil and your physical balance. So what we're talking now is soil science is no longer an, an application of reductionist chemical abuse or chemical use on your land, we're now talking about it as a three-legged stool. And it has to be healthy in chemistry, biology, and the physical aspects of it as well, to be balanced. You've got to have all three going for you. Now this is what a lot of our agricultural systems have simply ignored. They seem to think that the, getting the, the basic structure of the NPKS nitrogen, phosphate, potash and sulphur, getting them balanced will be enough to keep things working and we're now discovering that that is just the tip of the iceberg and only one of the aspects that we need to get right. One of the problems that we have with our scientific community is that they're trying to balance the biology in the soil by changing the chemi chemistry and that's wrong. This is where we're coming down to the nitty gritty of it. And one of the problems that our standard farming practices do not understand is that the chemis chemical applications that they're putting on the land, in particular glyphosate and the things that they're using to kill off the, uh, the greenery or the, the pasture before they actually re-sow it again and make it round up ready to start with, is completely the wrong way of going about it. Because while they're knocking down the greenery or the pasture and its roots, they're also destroying the biology, the microbes underneath the plants and that are attached to and are symbiotic with the plants. One of the issues we have with our fertilizer systems at the moment is that they are all based on high salt indexes in order to be a carrier to be absorbed by the soil and the plants. And that's the problem we have. In fact, for our local uh, folks that are selling some of the glyphosate products, they say it's no more harmful than common salt. That's their call. And unfortunately, that's where they're wrong. It's the common salt or the salt index in their fertilizers that are doing the killing of the microbes in the soil. Microbes hate salt. They don't respond to it at all. And those chemicals with the high salt index and their, and their acids are just simply wiping out your microbes in the soil. So you're killing off the, every piece of the health in your soil before you start again. And so you're putting your soil far further back in its ability to produce. And as a result, you're having to put more and more of those chemicals on your land to produce less and less. And they're finding out in, the, in Europe and in the States that doesn't work anymore. So what we're finding is if you focus on your biology, 
and you get the balance of your healthy soil right with your fungi, bacteria and protozoa and getting a good mix and using your uh, biological inoculum, your soil comes naturally healthy and your chemistry will come into balance across the, across the spectrum. Now that's something that we haven't been talking about at all. We've had it the other way around, using the chemistry to try and balance the biology. And I'm saying, no, let's look at the biology and try and balance the chemistry with the focus on the biology. And it's been working. And I've proven that it's working year after year after year. So, okay, here we have some soil tests. These are the standard ones that you get from the laboratory such as uh, Hills or your agricultural laboratory. And it lists all of your elements down here, what values they are and so on. That soil looks absolutely marvellous. That's last year's 2020. Now, in addition to this type of soil, I've gone back and taken year after year after year after year and watched the change in the soil as I'm changing the biology, I'm also changing the chemistry. And here's an example of that change in biology over two seasons. This is season one, and this is adding uh, compost and biological inoculum, known as actively aerated compost tea. So change from that year there to that year there. We add to that the Reams test from the Bioservices Lab gives us an idea of the relationship among certain things and the plant availability of various nutrients in the soil and the energy output of the soil. Remember, with all these organisms being alive in your soil, there is a certain energy going on in there. And this helps measure that and tell us how vital our soils are. You don't need to have your tests taken and a soil test taken the way I do. That's a big expense every year. But you can trust that the research that we've been doing here works, and it works over a large range of soils. It will not work everywhere, and it doesn't make everything perfect every time. Unfortunately, we have to bow to the fact that the chemical industries have a lot, uh, a lot of scientists available to them, and a lot of ways of applying things that the standard organic or biological farmer doesn't have access to. Now, I have some certain claims to fame that I'm really proud of. For example, when you see a shot of the tomatoes in the top house here, the, the, uh, the potentates, those tomatoes have been grown in the same soil without change for 20 years. The soil scientists that I talked to say, no, you can't do that. Not only have they I've grown tomatoes in there, but they've been followed by t potatoes. So they're exactly the same family and they should be taking the same nutrients from the soil. Both families should be collapsing by now and yet my soil is healthier now than it ever has been. Ask yourself why. It all comes down to managing the biology while you're working on the chemistry. The whole thing works perfectly for itself. We'll talk about that again. Thank you.